Good morning, everyone. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Chairman, members, and guests. We really appreciate for the privilege to make a presentation in this meeting. In the treatment of aortic arch disease, conventional open repair is a standard one. However, even in the recent paper, it is reported that it has a high operating mortality and stroke rate. And also, the cardiopulmonary bypass time was identified as a risk factor for mortality. On the other hand, hybrid arch repair or TBR with debranching arch vessels has emerged as an alternative to the open repair, and it is expected expected to be less invasive because it eliminated the use of cardiopulmonary bypass. Several reports are reports the uh, satisfactory results of the hybrid arch repair. However, these are uh, relatively small studies and the long-term result is not available. So the aim of this study is to elucidate the effectiveness of TBR with debranching arch vessels for aortic arch disease by evaluating the early and late results in your 14 years experience. From 1997 to 2010, aortic arch repair was performed for 478 cases. The majority was a hybrid on-pump procedure or open stand grafting technique, and 147 cases were hybrid procedure with, without uh, cardiopulmonary bypass or TIVA with debranching arch vessels. These 147 cases are ret ret retrospectively reviewed in the study. The indication for TBR with debranching arch vessels was uh, for the patient who have aortic arch disease and who have an adequate landing, proximal landing in zone zero to zone two. And the adequacy of the proximal landing was determined by the diameter of the aorta and the ceiling length, and also the condition of the proximal, such as mural thrombosis, calcification, and angulation were taken consider. The patient who have a good risk for open surgery was excluded from this procedure. The average age was 69 years old, and the preoperative comorbidities are listed here. And 70% uh, has preoperative chronic renal failure, and 21% has a history or pretreatment cancer. The aortic pathology included 19 for non dissection aneurysms and 53 dissection, and majority was in chronic phase. The maximum aortic diameter was 56 millimeter, and including eight urgent operation, and 10% of patients have a history of ascending or arch repair. The pro most proximal extent of the covered stand graft was in zo at zone zero in 22 case, and at zone one in 33 case, and at zone two in 92 case. Here you can see the uh, debranching procedures. For example, in zone zero case, ascending aorta to arch vessels bypass with sternotomy was performed in 12 case, and right subclavian, subclavian artery to left common carotid and left subclavian artery bypass with uh, a brachiocephalic artery chimney graft was performed in 10 cases. The number of stent graft for each case was 1.5, and Proximal and distal diameter was averaged in 35 millimeter and 31 millimeter. The stand graft cover length was 180 millimeter. Before 2008, we used our own custom fabricated graft, but after the approval of government from 2008, we used a commercially available device received here. The technical success was 98.6%, and operative mortality within 30 days was 2.0%. And the post-operative complication is listed here. There were four strokes. One is fetal, and one spinal cord ischemia, one trachotomy, two acute renal failure, and one shower embolization and ventricular alicemia was fetal. At the first post-operative CT scan, free, uh, freedom of endoleak was 89%, and there were about 10% of endoleaks, and the type of endoleaks are li li listed here. There are one type one distal and type two nine endoleaks, and these are successfully repaired by the endovascular repair. Among five type one repair, two minor endoleaks were uh, spontaneously uh, disappeared in the follow up, and subsequently, the secondary freedom from endoleak was 98%, uh, 89, uh, 98%. In the late, long, uh, late result, the follow up was averaged in. 29 months, maximally 145 months, 
and 356 patient years follow-up was completed. There were 20 late deaths 